Hello friends. We will discuss one condition of the anal canal which is very very common. In fact, uh, most of us also have suffered with this condition maybe once in a lifetime. But it is very very common. The condition I am talking about is fissure in NO. Fissure in NO, what is fissure? Fissure in NO is a linear ulcer in the lower part of the anal canal. So, since there is just kind of a tear or linear ulcer in the lower part of the uh, anal canal which is very very um, sensitive uh, to pain, it, it is below the dented line. So, fissure in NO is a very very painful condition and pain increases tremendously during defecation and immediately after defecation then it took, takes some time to slowly fade away. The fissures are most commonly located in the posterior midline. Most of the fissures are located there. About 10% or 10 to 15% are located in the anterior midline. More, uh, more so in the female patients it may be located anterior midline whereas in most of the other patients they are located in the posterior midline. In 1% of the patient, rarely in 1% of the patient you will find it uh, other than these two common places. And if you find a fissure in other places then you should be looking for some other causes like Crohn's disease, like HIV, like syphilis, like tuberculosis, leukemia. These are the conditions where you may have uh, multiple fissure in NO or fissure in NO in uh, uncommon positions. Common position I told you is the post, commonest position is posterior midline or an anterior uh, midline as in females. Condition is same, same seen equally in male into female, male or female. Only position may differ, but generally it is seen in both the sexes equal equal amount. And uh, the symptoms, as I told you, is the most typical symptom is a tearing pain while during defecation followed by either the uh, stool or uh, blood stained, there is a straining, uh, uh, streaking of the stool with blood or there may be some uh, drops of blood which follow the act of defecation. And uh, uh, these fissures are generally of two types, either acute fissure in nano or chronic fissure in nano. In acute fissure in nano, uh, generally um, treatment is easy, they do not require surgery, they can be treated with some medical management and they heal. Whereas chronic fissure in nano is those who are not healing with uh, adequate medical management and after few weeks they become chronic, they, they have some kind of fibrous uh, uh, lining in their uh, floor as well as um, say internal sphincters may start uh, becoming visible in the base of the uh, chronic fissure and then it is difficult to treat these fissures with medical management only and if you look at the chronic fissures you will also find that there is a hypertrophic papilla at the upper end of the fissure and generally there is a skin tag uh, in the lower end of the fissure, the skin tag is also known as a sentinel pile. It's not a true pile, it's just a thick uh, hypertrophic uh, skin tag and is called uh, a sentinel pile. Chronic fissures are difficult to treat. As I said, uh, unlike the acute fissures, we can be easily treated with medical management. Chronic fissures are difficult to treat. and. Um, you know the etiology of the fissures, it is generally because of passage of a hard stool um, you, maybe during an uh, episode of constipation but it, that is generally the cause of fissures and uh, uh, fissures are generally diagnosed by inspecting the uh, area by separating the gluteal uh, cleft and carefully without much uh, intrusion in that area you can have a look at the fissure. Generally per rectal digital examination or a proctoscopic examination is very painful and generally not allowed by the patient. So you will have to bear with that and generally the uh, diagnosis is only by <coughs> inspection. 
Now, how do you treat? Hmm? The problem with fissures are because of the intense pain, there is intense spasm of the internal ring, uh, in, in, internal sphincter. And uh, uh, because of that intense spasm of the internal sphincter, there is ischemia of the, uh, of the area. And because of ischemia, it doesn't allow the fissure to heal. So it's a kind of a uh, sequence going on that uh, because of the pain there is spasm, because of spasm there is ischemia and because of ischemia there is no healing. And what is required for healing of the fissure is complete relaxation of the internal sphincter. So how do you get that? How? Because till you get relief of the complete pain, you will not be able to get a uh, spasm. So there are some medical methods which you try to relieve the spasm of the internal sphincter. What are those medical methods? You either apply nitrites are known to reduce the pain. So you use glycerin trinitrite. Uh, glycerin trinitrate. You apply the ointment, small amount of the ointment in that area. So it causes relaxation of the internal uh, sphincter and that helps in uh, reducing the spasm reducing the ischemia and helps in healing of the fissure. The second other agents which can be used are calcium channel blockers like uh, diltiazem or nifedipine. They also come in ointment form. You can <coughs> apply that. That also helps in reducing the spasm. Another way of reducing the spasm these days is topical bithanicol or even bot botulium injection. You uh, use a bot botulium toxin put multiple injections in the uh, internal sphincter that causes relaxation of the internal sphincter and helps in healing of the fissure. And in addition to this relaxing the internal sphincter, you also use the other uh, agents like stool softener. You can uh, use uh, bulk, uh, bulk forming stool bulk forming agents and uh, you also give uh, sits back to the patient that you tell the patient to sit in a warm uh, tub of warm water with maybe added a, a little bit of uh, antiseptic uh, agents in that and you give that sits bath twice a day that causes some relaxation of the sphincter which is under spasm and you can also give some ointment locally over the fissure to uh, reduce the pain that is you use a 2% xylocaine jelly which will cause some pain relief because of the anesthesia. Now comes if the fissure does not heal with this then what to do? Most of the acute fissures will heal uh, are likely to heal with this but chronic fissures generally do not respond to this kind of treatment so they require a surgical treatment. What are the surgical treatment? So you will have to relax the sphincter so you give a cut to the sphincter that is called lateral internal sphincterotomy. What you do is with a small nick, maybe under some local anesthesia or maybe a spinal anesthesia or a caudal block, sometimes under a short GA, you can uh, give a small uh, incision at the uh, in the perineum, expose the internal sphincter and cut it at one place. Uh, usually it is cut at 9 o'clock position uh, on the perineum and with this the internal sphincter uh, re relaxes. Because it's a circular sphincter, so if you cut it at one place, it cannot go into spasm for some time till this cut heals. So during that period, it relaxes completely and it helps in healing of the fissure. And most of the time, over 95% of the time, with one this surgery only, the fissure heals. Sometimes if the fissure becomes very chronic, then you may have to do a fissurectomy, remove that fissure and replace that area with a skin advancement flap. Okay, so that may be re required, but usually if you treat them early, they do not require uh, such an extensive treatment. Only uh, medical management for acute fissures is most of the time good enough and for a chronic fissure in nano, a little sphincterotomy. What used to be done earlier is a forceful dilatation of the anal sphincter to cause it relax. But uh, that is not a very good procedure, considered a very good procedure because forceful dilatation will cause incontinence for a longer time 
as well as it may cause bleeding within the uh, circular sphincter and may heal with further fibrosis and may cause a anal stenosis later on. So what is better is to do a lateral sphincterotomy which is a neat and clean procedure, very short procedure and has got good results and very little, uh, there is no incontinence actually if you do a neat uh, surgery. So that is the surgical procedure recommended if required and uh, uh, rarely for a very chronic fistula you may require a uh, skin advancement. After doing a fissurectomy you may have to advance the skin in that area because otherwise it will heal with a fibrosis. So that is what is the uh, about the anal fissures and their treatment. Thank you very much.